Nikki at Pog Googles. Um, I just thought that it was about time we refreshed some of the help that we gave you. Um, so I wanted to use our new Lavender Tea release to show you how you can kind of get more out of your CDs by using simple graphics programs. I know this really frightens a lot of you. Um, and you all think that you need to have something like Photoshop or that you have to buy fancy uh, software and it's not true. If you're using a PC for your CDs, which most of you are, or even a Mac, um, all, you can, all you really need to use is something like Word, but it's fantastic if you use something like Serif Craft Artist. Um, that's a fantastic program and Serif Craft Artist is actually a PC equivalent of Photoshop. So where you're paying something like £78 for Photoshop Elements, which is a simple version of Photoshop, if you use Serif Craft Artist, you can get that very often. Um, they're always doing like really good promotions where they give it away for free or, you know, for £5 or something like that. Really, really cheap. And it's a mega program. But if you don't have any of that and you're not, you're really scared about stuff, I think most of us can use Microsoft Word. So I want to show you how you can manipulate some really simple things that will really, really help your crafting and it will help you get more out of your CD products and your downloads. Um, you know, CD crafting gets a rough deal, but it's actually a very, very uh, cost-effective way of crafting and it's a very creative way of crafting because you're not confined to whatever you've got on an A4 paper sheet that you would buy as part of a paper kit. So, you know, the world really is your oyster when you go into digital graphics. So, anyway, off of the boring stuff, let's get on with the, the actual demo. Bear with me, because my PC's got loads of software on here, and it's a little bit slow, so bear with me. Um, and I might actually, if this goes on a bit, I might cut it into two videos, but I'll, I want to try and get it in, in as one. So, um, if you've never used our CDs before, you're going to know, because to reach this, you're probably going to have gone in the CD anyway, but we're going to go in, we're going to end, so got our terms of use which you just need to agree to please do read that it's about copyright and what you can and can't do and it is really really important for artists so here we're on to our main menu and our cds are all designed to be just click and print really really super easy so anyone can use them so for instance let's go into digistamps and you can just click through and basically if you want to see something you fancy and you want to open it you just literally click and it'll open up in your windows um, if you're on a PC. I'm going to talk as if we're on PC here. If you're on Mac, you know what happens because you're probably a little bit more savvy. Um, but it'll open up in your Mac Finder or your preview anyway. So it's going to open in Windows. I'm on Windows 7 here, so I've not upgraded to Windows 10. I don't really want this on this machine. And, you know, you're probably seeing it like this. If you want to, you can just actually minimise your window down quite often I like to actually see lots of my screen so I minimise this as small as I can and then I can move it around and do what I want with it. Okay? So let's just leave that there. So once you know once you go there you just basically then go to print and your printer will automatically come up in here. Now as you can see here, see this image? It's actually cut half of the image off and that is purely because I've got that box ticked and Windows automatically ticks that. You need to untick it and it'll actually make it fit to the page. Um, basically it fits it into the actual size of the frame. I don't know why. I don't know why anyone would ever really want that. And then really simple way to resize. Down the side here look, we can then go and actually resize very easily just by choosing one of these other options. So this one here is where you're going to get nine images onto a page. So it's going to size this down to probably about eight centimetres. When I'm designing, I always uh, make the images quite big so that you can actually re um, blow them up if you want to make them much bigger. And here as well, if you did want to decoupage, this is where you can do it really easy. You're going to get three here of exactly the same image at exactly the same size. So use that as a function because it's really really easy and you often don't need to go anywhere else to resize your images um, these, this CD doesn't have characters but usually with my characters if you click the 4 to a page 
four on an A4 sheet, or A4 is slightly smaller, I think, than eight and a half by eleven, or slightly bigger. But basically, that's like an A6, one of those images, and that really is about the right size for you to get onto the card. So, you know, generally, just take it down to one, and if you've got your digit of a character, that generally is going to fit, and it will probably fit most of your dies well if you wanted to put use your nest dies. Okay, so we'll go back to the menu on this. And we've got on this particular CD we've got lots of ingredients, lots of little bits and pieces that we want to kind of use. And what I'm going to do is show you there's a couple of different ways, but I'm going to show you the quick and easy way. Well, it doesn't really matter to be honest. So I'm going to open up this teacup, okay. Make it a little bit bigger for you. And there is actually a handle there but because it's back white background you actually see. Now look, if you go into file, you can actually copy here and stuff. So let's copy. And then here, I've got Word open, okay? And I'm actually just going to paste in here. Now, you can paste by right-clicking and do your paste, okay? Or what you can do, a great shortcut, is if you do Control v that pastes as well. So Control c will copy and Control v will paste, not control P because that's what it prints, it's control V. So in I've got two of these now, so I'm just going to click that and delete it. Okay? So I've just literally selected it and deleted it. So if I paste that back in. Now these little thing these little corner stops here, this basically is your uh, resizing anchors. Okay. Um, and depending on which one you click on it'll do different things. If you click on the middle one, that actually distorts it, but it allows you to drag it down. The same on the sides look. So you don't really want to do that. You always want to try and go from the corner. And what I'm going to do before I do anything else here, is I'm just going to undo that because I've been messing about there and I've actually distorted it. Could you see it go back then? So but if you go from the bottom right hand corner, that one on nearly every software program, I think, is always the one that will just scale it for you. Okay, so it'll just scale it straight up and down. Now, if I want to move that around my page, look, I'm just clicking it and dragging it. I can't move it, and that's because it's locked. So you should always right click on any image, and that actually always will bring up different things. So we've got a few different things. So we're going to go into format. And this actually does all sorts of different things. I'm not even going to go into all of this stuff right now because this is kind of like getting into like all sorts of different things. But like you've got your brightness and your concept, contrast. So if you, that was a photograph, you can actually brighten it in Word. And most people don't know Word does this, and it's such a powerful program. But what I do want to do is I'm going to go here to wrap text. And if we go to wrap text, it actually comes up with all these different things here. Now, what I always do is I do behind text, okay? And as soon as I select that, it allows me to move it. And basically, because Word is a processing program, it's, it's kind of like designed so that when you actually have all of your text typed out in your letter, um, if you put an image in, it makes that text all wrap around the image. So by placing the image behind, if we had a load of text, let me just write a load of text here. Make that bigger. Just make sure you don't select. Let me just go home and make my text a lot bigger. Okay, so you see now my image is behind, but if I actually change that, you've got to select the image. Look, if I do it as a square, look, it actually moves that text around it, look. Yeah? So it's because Word is designed for the actual text. So we want it behind text anyway. So we're going to get rid of this text because it's irrelevant. We don't want it. So just make sure you select that. Let's just get rid of all the words. Let's give a couple of characters at the top So did you see now? I've actually deleted my image by mistake. So you can either undo it, so you've got that little undo thing at the top look, and it's because it's 
kind of still wrapped a bit. So I'm just going to put paste it down. I'm not too worried because I'm just trying to show you guys. So we're going to resize it. We're going to go back to that wrap text. Go behind the text. And that actually allows me then to actually move it around. So I've got my teeth. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually add some extra images and I'm going to um, kind of like build up another image if you like. And this is what's great about a Polkadoodle CD. We always um, give you PNG images. And what that means is, look, if I put this, but if I drag that over here, can you see how it's got a clear background? If that was a JPEG, that would be white on the background and what that means is if I had my teacup there so if I copy that so I've done control C and I'm going to paste another one in front look that basically if I put that there you're actually seeing the image that's the image behind that's the one in front so basically you can see through it because it's a PNG gives you a transparent background not always because they can have a, a white background on ours, they will always have a transparent background. So you can layer your images up. And that's exactly what I want you to do. Because it's about you getting the maximum out of your CDs. So I'm going to go back to my CD. So let's have a look. All right, let's open our teapot. And I'm going to... Um, actually, I'm just right-clicking that and I'm going to copy. Come back to my Word. And paste. So again now, look, though, look, it's locked. So I need to go back to my wrap, behind text, and now I can move it. Okay, so let's resize that. Oh, look, flowers there, something. Now, my teacup is behind my teapot because I actually brought this image in first. I can bring that in front, and that's really easy. So what you need to do is right-click, you go to size, um, sorry, go here look so where it says bring to front center back bring to front bring it to the front and now it's in front okay so you can actually send it behind and it'll always do that in front of whatever the image is um, behind basically so have a little play around it's not hard at all it's just knowing that these things are actually here so let's have a teacup there in front of our and I think we need some nice flowers here as well. Now what you can do, if you want, is if you look up at the top here, look, there's a picture, you can insert pictures, and you can do it a couple of different ways. With the CDs, what you can do is you can go in through your computer, so in you'll find your CD in here, and basically what you need to do, I'm not going to do it that way, Well, I'll do it that way because it's a bit complicated. But I've got it all open here. So basically, you would then see this CD here in your documents. Okay. So basically, you see the CD, then you will see, if I go, there you go. So you'll see a little yellow icon here. And then what you do is you go into the CD root. There you go. There's your, um, that's your actual program. You go into the autoplay into images and then you ignore anything that says do not use because that will just be thumbnails okay it says do not use and then you go into your folders so just like you would normally view your documents is exactly the same so if ever your cd doesn't work or you, you get really good or whatever or, or you making serif digikits um basically this is the way to do it so we're going to go in and we're going to go to our let's go to ingredients okay um, we're going to choose some things. So basically, let's pick this one. So again, I can copy that. I don't, know if it's gonna, I don't think it's going to work that way. But basically, what you would do is you would actually select that within Word, and then it will actually paste it in here for you again. So that's using the picture thing there. Okay. But I personally find it easier to go back to the CD and do it from the CD because I can see everything much more clearly. So look, 
here's a nice little um, vase of flowers. So let's pop here. See, I think it's easier to do it this way. Paste it, and look how big it comes up. That's fabulous. So that's A4, that, that image. I mean, look, that's A4. This is the size that I've got my sheet set at, and it's going to print perfectly. So we'll put a vase of flowers behind our teapot. So what we're going to do is we're going to do that wrap text thing again so we can position that behind. And then we're going to send that to the back. Okay, so look, we're actually building up quite a nice little picture here, and it's really not complicated at all. Everyone thinks this is so hard. Look, we're going to open some flowers, copy, paste, wrap text behind. Just always remember that behind text because it does make it a lot easier. And then we can go really tiny. And then I think what we can do then, get your mouse, oops, you can actually select the whole thing. Oops, sorry, right, what you need to, sorry, I'm trying to get used to working with the PC and not my Mac. So, every time you select, look, you get all these little handles, they're called handles, okay? So if you select each image, you get all of those handles. And what you can do, if you want to resize the whole of that, what you need to do is you need to group it. So look, every time I'm right-clicking and I'm getting all these extra options. So when I group it, it then becomes one whole image. But that isn't forever. Um, basically then, I can just go back and ungroup. Okay? And then it'll go back and I've got all of my individual things all there again. Now what I want to do is I'm going to add a sentiment in. So let's go back to the menu, we'll go to sentiments, and let's find a nice sentiment. Let's have this one, like this one, you mean a lovely cup of tea. So copy, word, paste, control V, don't forget, and this time I'm going to make that bigger. I'm going to do my wrap text. enables me to rotate, look. So, I'm going to actually send that to the back. There you go, look. I'm then going to select, in fact, this one is a little bit bigger. But I'm going to So don't, um, just keep going, and then don't, don't worry about resizing it or anything. It's just better to do it when you've grouped it, because um, then you won't sort of risk undo, um, ungrabbing one of those images, and then you forget. So now, if you wanted to, you could just print that off, and that's an A4 sheet, and that could be the front of your card. If you want to, um, you know, this is the point where if you want to actually add your own text, so happy birthday mum, you know, you can actually do this now. So because we've got all that text at the back, look, so now let's just centre that. You can do your own, um, uh, Right, okay, sorry, right, I'm going to go back a little bit. So you can put text in there like that. But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take that out. So where it's selecting blue, you have to make sure you don't click delete, because it will delete the whole thing, as you can see. Okay, so the best way of doing text, sorry, I got distracted then, because someone came in the room. Right, what you can do now, <clears throat> this is the best way of doing the text, sorry. Um, if you click here, Look at all these things that you can do in here. So we've got a text box. So we're going to do a simple text box. Okay. Now.
now with the text box you can move this right around your screen wherever you like and it gives you a load of rubbish text in here as a, an example. So I'm just going to over type this, happy birthday month, okay, and I'm just conscious that my video has been going on for a long time. So then <coughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back, I'm going to make it much bigger. I'm not going to mess about too much with it, but just say for instance that's what you wanted to do. Now the only thing here is, look, see how it's given me a black outline and a white box that's going to cut into here. So I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to format my text box. So I'm right clicking it again, look, and where are we? That'll be in here. So basically, you need to go into here. We can go into our colour, our text colour look. And go into the fill. So I don't want any fill. Okay, so that's now given me a transparent. So I do want it to be. Let's do purple. The whole thing to be purple. And then we've still got that horrible outline on the box, which for some things would work, but it doesn't for this. So we go into the shape outline and we want no outline. And there you go, bingo. So all you've got to do is click on it and then you can you see how I'm dragging when I actually drag on that edge my cursor changes, so it means I can actually move it around. Okay. So I'm gonna actually put that underneath there and I'm gonna center it as well. So let's go back up to our thing. There you go, and that looks a lot better. And then if we wanted to wanted to make this into a topper, you can do that as well. So if we go to shapes, let's just do get circle, an oval. And basically we just drag the oval and make that as big as one. I'm just going to do this very, very quickly. So again, behind text, we're going to actually send that to the back. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it. So, because I haven't done that behind text, I'm going to send that to back, and then this one, I'm going to send that to the back. So, I've got two. This one, I'm actually going to go to that format shape. The fill, I actually want the fill colour to be white, and then this one. If you can't select, click on this. Why is it not letting me select? I think it's good to be done. Let me just move so it won't let you select something. It's kind of right. I can delete it. Oh, it wasn't doing the right thing. Um, so we're going to format the shape, and this one, the colour, I'm going to make into that nice purple colour. So it all combines. There you go. And then this, we can make that a little bit smaller if we want to. Drag that in there. And I'm just going to make my text smaller. There we go. And look, you've made your own topper in not very much time. You can change the lines. But really, I just wanted to show you how versatile Word is and how easy it actually is to use. So I hope you found that really useful and that you're going to have a good play around with it and everything. And if I can be of any help at all, just tag me on Facebook. I'm always around. Go into the Polka Doodles Crafting um, group and I'm always around in there. I have no life. I live my life on Facebook. But anyway, thanks for buying our products and um, I'll see you soon. Bye.